Uh, we're in a very dangerous situation, not because the North is going to attack the United States outright, but because we have two inexperienced, bombastic leaders that could stumble into nuclear war. And it's quite dangerous, and it's the reason why the two sides need to talk to each other. Right now, we're in a game of nuclear chicken. Both sides are <coughs> threatening each other, back and forth, tit for tat, and it's just cycling upwards. It's very dangerous, and these leaders don't have experience of how to get out of this, and the danger is that the only thing they know is how to sit, rattle their sabers and ratchet up the pressure, and where is it going to end? So we need to find a way to, to calm down, bring this thing back down to earth, talk to each other, and hopefully cooler heads will prevail. I think there is some relationship there, and, and I've talked to some friends. We've seen somewhat uh, a typical kind of back and forth uh, between North Korea, threats issued in response to crying these new sanctions. And what's unusual is that we have a U.S. president who's willing to kind of get down into the, the mud with, uh, with North Korea and threaten right back, kind of ratcheting up the rhetorical tension, but we haven't seen uh, any specific uh, imminent uh, threat, uh, at least on the ground. State Department and the budget fights and some other things and, and concerns that he was out of the loop. The, the statements show us out of sync with, uh, with both our allies and with key players in the region like China. And I think that's what Secretary Tillerson is trying to get. Um, and I think Secretary of Defense Mattis is, is, is on board, frankly, because he understands the implications of what a war would be like, trying to, to keep up the pressure but steer it back towards uh, some dialogue. But if, if, if the statements keep going, uh, that makes it much harder. Ultimately, it's our actions uh, that counts. We're, we're struggling in a variety of other areas. In some ways, the North Korea issue is relatively simple. Is, is, is a war on the Korean Peninsula the second worst option? In other words, the worst option being a nuclear-capable, uh, uh, ICBM-capable North Korea? Or is war actually the worst option and we need to work towards a containment, kind of deterrence, strengthening deterrence, working with our allies and, and trying to contain this problem and manage it over the long term? I, I wouldn't give up on the pursuit of negotiation and dialogue and the use of pressure to try to aid that. So I think um, the, the, the U.S. administration is, is doing the right thing in terms of pursuing sanctions, trying to apply pressure. That's a form of containment. It starves uh, North Korea of cash to be able to, to uh, accelerate their program. Uh, criticism thrown Tillerson's way for not uh, standing up for the State Department in the budget fights and some of uh, All it does, I think, is, is reinforce in North Korea and in China's mind that America is not serious about wanting to find a way to live with North Korea and ultimately we're trying to figure out how to get rid of North Korea. I think that's a, that's a realistic assessment of, of where the U.S. administration is at. Some people are, are convinced North Korea will never give up its nuclear weapons as long as this current regime is in place, so we have to focus on undermining the regime. and it's. And others are, are willing to try to find a way uh, to, to live with North Korea. And uh, this mixed signaling undermines our relationship with, with key allies in terms of getting their support and with China. And uh, it, it just pushes uh, North Korea farther away.